Hello there once again, gentlemen and gents. It's your old pal, Lock the Bounty Hunter. And today we're going to be talking about a story that just won't leave itself alone. Of course, I'm talking about Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Now, the internet has more or less agreed that this movie is objectively awful. That even though there are one or two good things about the movie, for the most part, it is just a god-awful, terrible film. However, this story just keeps getting better and better. Let's go ahead and dive in because this, this, is, this is precious. So as we all know, Indiana Jones didn't even make half of its production budget back within the first two weeks of being released. But it gets worse for Disney because Mission Impossible 7 is slated to do huge and make big bucks at the box office. And honestly, I'm not surprised. A lot of people are willing to pay good money to see Tom Cruise risk his life. And the funny thing is, I don't think Tom Cruise is risking his own life doing crazy ass stunts to entertain the fans. I think he's doing it because he just wants to. It wouldn't surprise me in the slightest that if he doesn't care about the fans, he just wants to get paid a whole bunch of money to be attached to a plane while it takes off. The dude's crazy. I wouldn't blame him. But this is a big summer blockbuster. It's gonna do huge at the box office. That's expected. What wasn't expected was a low budget horror movie doing significantly better than a huge summer blockbuster. Insidious 5 tops the box office thanks in part to perfect release date between Indiana Jones and Mission Impossible. Yeah, if that ain't a hot cup of cope, I don't know what is. I mean, just look at this dude's face. He's even shocked that this movie did as well as it did. Just look at that. This is an oh my god, I'm gonna get paid so much in royalties face. Okay, but this is a legacy low-budget horror movie. Of course it's gonna do well at the box office. Insidious has a dedicated group of fans we haven't seen since the Saw Saga. So that's to be expected. Yeah, it's a bit of a shocker that it's doing better than Indiana Jones. I'm, we can give that one the benefit of the doubt. But it got worse because The Sound of Freedom, a movie that nobody heard of, that had almost zero promotion and even less buzz, was number one and completely BTFO'd Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And it's even worse when its star, Jim Caviezel, is a guy who's been blacklisted by Hollywood. No joke, he hasn't starred in a big movie since the Jesus Christ snuff film, Passion of the Christ. So naturally, the legacy media right now is going in full-on damage control and going to the last resort for woke leftists all over the world. It's insulting the fans, insulting anybody who is a fan of legitimate entertainment. Let's take a look at this article here because this is just absolutely precious. James Mangold derides fans as divisive for not liking his deconstruction of indiana jones in indiana jones in the dial of destiny oh boy brace yourself guys this 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 should be pretty rich indiana jones in the dial of destiny director james mangold decided to deride fans for not liking his deconstruction of indiana jones well for starters you shouldn't have deconstructed indiana jones i quote the internet reviewer mr plinkett the indiana jones movies aren't complicated they're about a rugged hero going to exotic locales with hot women, cracking a whip, and getting into gunfights with people twice his size who have massive swords. Speaking with The Hollywood Reporter, Mangold was asked by Brian Davids, Life is filled with peaks and valleys, and I appreciate when my fictional heroes, such as Indy, have their own ups and downs. So why does a segment of the audience seem to want these legacy characters to be infallible? I just can't figure out why anyone would want such little drama. Well, the answer to that question is incredibly simple. People don't want drama in their Indiana Jones movies. Indiana Jones gets beaten up. He gets outsmarted. And honestly, he has bad luck. That's his ups and downs. He's not that deep of a character. That's not why people love him. But that's not the answer we got. Mangold replied, well, there's a point where these characters become symbols more than characters, and so it becomes this anxiety when you examine the humanity of a hero, you somehow weaken them. Indiana Jones had plenty of humanity, and in every single movie, there was a time in which Indy was at his lowest, and he was about to give up, but ended up mustering up the strength he needed to save the day. You look at all of them. Well, with the exception of Crystal Skull, which isn't that bad of a movie, by the way. You can sue me. My lawyer is extremely bored. But in this case, all you're doing is making fun of Indy for being old. 
That's all you're doing. And nobody wants to see their favorite characters become old and bitter. Anyways, moving on. He continued, and honestly, I can't speak for how fans relate and wrestle with these questions in relation to other movies. Certainly in relation to mine, I think your question almost has my answer built into it. I mean, I think you're already, in a sense, addressing it. Good drama gives a hero a problem. If a movie is about a beautiful hero who is capable of anything and is virtually indestructible and is without any personal issues or concern, then you just have a fashion video with action. And that statement is nothing like Captain Marvel or the new Star Wars movie or that new insufferable character that's bound to replace indiana jones who is so dull and annoying that i already forgot her name i'm a fan of starting a character in one place to go to another mangold elaborated movies are a continuum by definition in drama the character starts in one place and ends up in another these are two tactics that leftists like to use in order to explain their unacceptable behavior the first is to weakly insult the people who are questioning them none of these guys have any legitimate with which to speak and then they toss a nice big word salad that doesn't answer the question but makes them appear as pretentious as humanly possible let's go ahead and move on down here Mangold then accused critics of this deconstruction of being divisive and it was his and Lucasfilm's choice to deconstruct Indiana Jones in the first place he said so if people want to be divisive in the age of social media they can focus on where a character starts as opposed to where they end or they can focus on where they end as opposed to where they start so in short what this guy is saying is that the product isn't bad it's that the people are too stupid to appreciate what he's created we're talking about art in an Indian Indiana Jones movie. The only art I want to see in an Indiana Jones movie is ridiculous set pieces that are borderline racist. In reality, for Harrison, who's playing this character, he's tracing an arc and he's changing through the whole picture. So it all depends on where you're landing and where you're pointing your finger at at the timeline. But Indiana Jones doesn't need a character arc. His character is relatively simple. He's suave, he's sophisticated, he's intelligent, but he's also rugged and kind of a badass. Plus, he's really good at punching the Nazis, which is what people pay to see. For the love of tennis, it's not rocket surgery. Ironically, Mangold previously admitted he was deconstructing Indiana Jones and that moviegoers would have to adjust and retool their brains for this guy. Am I so out of touch? No. It's the children who are wrong. That is essentially what these guys are saying about Indiana Jones. And it wouldn't surprise me if this story just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Thanks a lot for checking out the new video, guys. If you found yourself heading towards the brink of laughter, scroll on down, hit that like and subscribe button for me, hit ring the notification bell. Let's go ahead and get this word out to as many people as we can and give the good old fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. I'll see you on the next video. And until then, peace out, homies.